Donald Curry and Robin Blake, also uh, as the teammates of Gene Hatcher. The tail of the tape shows Sacco in at 139, Hatcher at 140, and the uh, older Sacco is 29, Gene Hatcher 26 years of age, born in Fort Worth, Texas. Sacco born in Mar del Plata, Argentina. The referee is Ernesto Magana from Mexico. You may recall him in the Moore Duran fight, a fight in which I commented at the time, the worst exhibition of refereeing I had seen because he let it go far too long with the victory by Duran over Moore by knockout. Hatcher starting quickly here as he said he would, landed a right hand with the opening blow of the fight. The scoring will be done by three judges at ringside, and they are Les Muller from South Africa, Chung Young Su from South Korea, and Gerlando Lucia from Italy. Tim has been shoved, punches landed already by both fighters. They don't like each other, we know that. And they're coming out just that way. Challenger Sacco feeling that he won the fight. One judge scored it for him. Most ringside observers thought that Hatcher won more comfortably than a split decision in the 15-round battle in Fort Worth last December. Hatcher in the maroon trunks with silver trim. That was a surprise collision of heads. Hatcher's not making any, any uh, faint, giving the head faints. He's just walking straight in. Although he's doing the right thing because he's trying to uh, initiate authority in the first round. He started to come back with the left hook after the right hand, which is a mistake he made in the first fight. In the last fight, Sacco was controlling the early rounds with his jab. And in the middle of the fight, Hatch just started to use his jab, which is a good jab, and he took the fight over. Solid right landed by Sacco, the challenger. We mentioned that he is of Italian heritage, his family from Calabria in southern Italy. And so most of this audience here will be cheering for him. There are some Americans here, however, and a contingent of Argentinians that came all the way to cheer for Sacco. Born and raised in Argentina. His grandfather came over from Italy. Sizable Italian population in Argentina. Another right hand by the challenger, Sacco, countering. Body shots by Hatcher. One thing about it, Tim, the first fight, these guys were in a, it was a war, and they know fully well they're going to experience the same thing. Ready? This is the 16th round. They fought 15 rounds like this, and they're starting right all over again. Another thing, Gil, the fact they can't change. When my fight with Roberto Duran, I was able to box him the second time. With Hatcher, he can't change. Well, Ray, I see a change in Sacco. He's throwing, he's setting down more and throwing bombs. First fight, he was moving side to side and snapping that left jab out. This, this fight, he's going right after Hatcher from the first round. He's landed some big punches. About 30 seconds remaining in the first round, scheduled for 15 under WBA rules. And as you said, similar to the first fight, because uh, they have not yet had a clinch. The first fight went eight rounds without a clinch. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, non-stop boxing. We're in the final seconds of round number one, with a furious pace established. The champions presented by Old Spice Antiperspirant and new improved stick deodorant. When I'm in the ring, I want to win. I don't possess maybe one of the greatest puncher, uh, but I'm there for 15 rounds, 10 rounds to fight every second of it. I fight for the public. I like to, I'm an entertainer. When I go in there, I like to entertain, I like to, everybody's going to say Vito is a good fighter. New Old Spice Solid keeps guys so much drier, they just might give up their men in antiperspirant mid-stick. Hey, Bronco. Here's a present. Hardly used. New Old Spice Solid keeps you drier. Compared to men in New Old Spice keeps you 35% drier. So you may want to switch mid-stick. Norman, from me to you. Practically brand new. Why wait to be drier? Get New Old Spice Solid antiperspirant now. Take my men in, please. We are live from Campione d'Italia on the shores of Lake Lugano in Switzerland. Gene Hatcher in the maroon trunks, the challenger Ubaldo Sacco in white from Argentina. We scored the first round for Sacco and it was very much like the start of the first battle. Non-stop action, no clinching, busy, busy work by both fighters and we thought Sacco had the better of it. Well Tim, at the end of the first round, Sacco started to get that educated jab work and landed three or four good snappy jabs. Hatcher was instructed to stay inside and work the body. 
and stay close to his man in order to smother his punches because on the outside you notice the jab of Sako works very well, very consistent. Both boxers had distinguished amateur careers. Hatcher had many more fights as Sako turned pro in 1978 at the age of 22. Tim, Sako is not using his legs at all. He's, he's putting his head right in there for Hatcher to hit. He said he was going to go to war with Sacho, and that's what, with Hatcher, that's what he's doing. No, no movement at all. Right there you go, nailed with a good right hand. And another short right by the champion, Hatcher. Hatcher, whose nickname is Mad Dog, gives you a dogged performance every time. He is relentless, doesn't let up, keeps a steady, fierce pace. Left hand counter by the challenger and then a left hand counter by the champion. I like what I see in Hatcher now. He's starting to follow with that left hook instead of just throwing one punch, the right hand. Because his man is close enough for him to connect with the, the uh, left hook. Scheduled for 15 rounds. The rematch between Hatcher and Sacco for the WBA 140 pound title. Tim, before the last fight, Sacco hadn't had a fight in 14 months. Now, he hasn't had a fight since the last Hatcher fight, but he did fight three exhibitions in front of live crowds. So he has been active. Three eight-round exhibitions against a series of fighters each night. But uh, as you point out, neither fighter with a, a serious fight for real in the entering, intervening period since last December. There's a good left counter again by Sacco. Under a minute to go, round two. One thing about it, uh, Hatcher must do something about that left jab of Sacco. He must put up better defense because that same jab in the first fight was able to cut him up. He was in the third round where he suffered the cut and then several more. Same kind of free swinging action we saw in the first fight. Well, Sacco is fighting Hatcher's fight and doing a pretty good job at it. Good combination by Sacco. Under the 32nd mark, Sacco looking much sharper in this fight than he did in the gym, Gill, when we saw him training. <laughs> no comparison, Tim. Final seconds of round number two, and the crowd into it here. The champions presented by Old Spice after shave and cologne. There weren't a lot of people in the world uh, who thought I was going to beat a great Sugar Ray Robinson. I felt that I'd worked hard and that I'd studied well and that I had everything in order and I felt within myself that I could do it. Anytime anything works out the way you plan, it's got to be great and this worked out uh, every bit as good as we'd planned and uh, I had the middleweight championship. So it was a great thrill. Round number three, live from Campione d'Italia. Tim Ryan with Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy watching Gene Hatcher defend his title against the challenge for the second time of Ubaldo Nestor Sacco of Argentina, ranked number one by the WBA, number 13 by the WBC. Tim, Sacco's punches are so much sharper this time around and very accurate. In fact, he was able to hit Hatcher with at least five punch combination. Throwing the right hand more freely, too. That was the one that required surgery. He calls it his bionic right hand. They grafted a bone from the radius bone in the same right arm into the hand. And, and then he had the 14-month layoff before his first fight against uh, Hatcher. And he said, no question, that he, he felt the layoff had hurt him in that bout. You can tell if a fighter studied tapes and films of, the, of this previous fight because you can see the concentration in Sako eyes. He's, everything he's doing is for a reason. Body movement, head feints. He doubles the jab, and he comes back with the right hand. He's not wasting any energy at all. Sacco just led with a right uppercut. That can be very, very dangerous if, if Hatcher catches him coming with it. Both these young men are married. Gene Hatcher's wife, Lori, is here at ringside to watch him. Sacco, the father of three children. Hatcher's with two youngsters. Hatcher, oh boy. He's got the challenger rocked into the corner, but Sacco punching back. Hatcher trying to pin him there. Sacco has been trying to throw an uppercut because what happens as Hatcher moves in, he, he dips down. Good combination by the champion. Right hand lead Low landed. Low blow by Hatcher, but the referee missed it. right hand lead and then a right hand behind it by the champion. Hatcher picking up the pace. Round number three. Now Sacco just physically 
pushing him off. Under a minute to go in the third round. Oh, they banged heads against him. It was in round three that Hatcher was cut in the first fight. Joe Barrientes, his trainer, cut man, did a real good job the rest of the way. I still think Hat Sacco should be moving from side to side, Tim. He's fighting Gene Hatcher's fight. And Gene Hatch is a tough man. Under the 30-second mark we go in round three, scheduled for 15. Oh, big right hand by the champion. Sacco stayed right there. Right hand back from Sacco. Combination scored by the challenger. Another tough round. Final seconds, round three. I don't know. We are back. Live from Campione d'Italia. So far, a replay of the first fight between Hatcher and Sacco. We're into round number four. It went the distance the last time at this same pace. The difference to this point, the fact that Hatcher has not been cut. He was cut in round three. Went on to score a split decision, and he just landed a good left hook counterpunch. Tim, the other difference is that Hatcher started very slowly last time. This time he started a lot quicker. Remember the last fight, the last five rounds, Hatcher was in control. Yes, he was. He appeared to be the stronger physically, and of course, Sacco feels that uh, the layoff was the difference in the last fight, 14 months before it. This time they both been off, except as you pointed out, Gil, Sacco fought three eight-round exhibitions. Hatcher has a pretty good left jab of his own. I don't know why he's not using it more. Sacco complaining about a low blow to the referee, Magana. And Hatcher has indeed landed several of them. Short right and an uppercut by the champion. I'm surprised that Sacco hasn't been using that left jab at all. Sacco with a right hand counter. The uppercut by Sacco is starting to work now. And again, he's stunning this man. Staying close, not moving, not using up a lot of unnecessary energy. Good right hand by Hatcher. Another big right hand by the champion. Yes, indeed, Ray. But Sacco showed in the first fight he could take a punch. <laughs> Warning for pushing to There's Hatcher. Three, three right hands that Hatcher bounced off the chin of Sacco. But Gilly has to come back with that left hook. Well, that was the mistake he made last fight, Ray. Right hand, no left hook. Gene Hatcher with his father in his corner, his wife and his mother in the audience here. Most of the crowd, however, for Ubaldo Nestor Sacco. Tito Lecturi told Sacco to use that right uppercut, and Gene Hatcher's landing straight right hands, and I'll take a straight right hand over an uppercut any day. <laughs> uppercut should leave yourself wide open. Under a minute to go, round four. Tito Lecturi, manager and trainer of many European and Argentinian champions, I should say, and he is in the corner with the father of Sacco. Ubaldo Sr. A lot of redness around the left eye of Hatcher now, Tim. Toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Right from the opening bell. Well, we said these guys don't like each other. <laughs> and I don't think we've had a clinch yet. Under the 30-second mark, we go round four. Sacco trying to push Hatcher off as he was bowled into the ropes and didn't like that. Final seconds of round number four, scheduled for 15. A grueling pace has been established. We are back, live in Campione d'Italia, round five. The champion on the right of your screen, Gene Hatcher, in the maroon trunks from Fort Worth, Texas. The second title defense, the rematch against Dubaldo Sacco. Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard, Joe Clancy as the champion landed a big right hand. Both fighters in excellent condition. This pace had not let up at all. They went at it from the very first round, and Hatcher proved that he is very confident by getting in first. Hatcher was determined to end this fight in five or six rounds. The pace has been similar to the first fight. He did get off to a quicker start, as Joe Clancy pointed out, but so far it looks like Sacco is very much right there with him. here in the Casino Municipale and full of boxing fans who are very much in support of Sacco primarily. Left 
took on the break. And now, the referee warned Hatcher, but it was Sacco did a real cute trick. He moved Hatcher right into his left hook. Hatcher just keeps coming forward no matter what Sacco does. Now Hatcher is starting to put combinations together. He's not just throwing one punch. And there's to the body and head, Ray, which, which is very, very effective. Two to the body, one to the head. There's there the body. Is. Oh, and he got nailed with a good Yes, he hook. did. A right uppercut. Sacco scored that counter. And another. Sacco is standing right there. He's not moving. He's got Hatcher in some trouble. Hatcher punching back. Has Hatcher in a little trouble, Tim? Yes, he does. As Ray pointed out, Sacco is much the sharper puncher. And Hatcher is the busier fighter. Under a minute to go in the fifth round. Look at the uppercut thrown by Sacco. He's starting to raise Hatcher's head, then he's able to connect with another punch. But this is Hatcher's kind of a fight. Sacco has to be in great shape to fight this way. Toe to toe in the center of the ring from the opening bell. And both fighters are putting all their weight behind each punch. The leverage they're getting is incredible. Sacco was hurt just then, Tim. He was hit by, hurt, hit by left hook. Sacco, Sacco complained about a low blow and then caught an unaware Hatcher. And Hatcher put his knee down to get a little break here. A pretty thoughtful move. Although it will result in a two-point round. And there's blood from the nose of the champion, Hatcher. He, Hatcher was hurt, Tim. He took that eight Tim, count. That was a smart move on Hatcher's part. Gave him a little time to recover. That's the end of round five with the crowd on its feet here. The Sacco Partisans. And Hatcher deliberately went down to one knee, which I think was a smart move, although it will may, should be a two-point round. But, uh, Gil, would you agree with what he did? Tim, it was a very smart move. Points are not going to decide this fight. He was really in trouble. If he got nailed two more punches, he was gone for the night. All right, now this was a rather sneaky move by Sacco, not to say not a good one, but he complains about the low blow here from Hatcher. Now watch, Hatcher walks in with his hands down, and here comes the punch, bang. That hurt him, and he didn't recover with that combination there, right to the nose, and, and opted to go down to one knee. Now, gentlemen, any speculation about the nose? Well, Tim, that, Joe Barrientos is a good cut man. I don't think the nose is going to be a problem. I think it's going to be a problem if Hatcher can weather the storm for another round or two. Well, what I was asking about was whether or not the possibility that might have been broken or that he's having trouble breathing. We're watching round six. We're underway. He's been, Hatcher's been hit by a lot of uppercuts, and those uppercuts do a lot of damage to your nose. And they bust you up. To, uh, they uppercuts bust you up pretty badly. Hatcher starting quickly again here at round eye has a cut over the left eye. The champion who was cut in the first fight several times, starting in round three, has now been cut over the left eyebrow. Helped him. This is a replay of the last fight, except the Sacco is a lot stronger and punching a lot sharper. Ubaldo Nestor Sacco from Mar del Plata, Argentina. There's a sign of desperation in the eyes of Gene Hatcher because that cut could possibly get worse. Sugar Ray Leonard, Joe Clancy, and Tim Ryan, we are live from Campione d'Italia on the shores of Lake Lugano in Switzerland, and it has been an action-packed fight. Tim, really, nothing can surprise you in boxing. Hatcher really just did not, uh, Sacco, excuse me, just did not look good in the gymnasium, and look at him now. What a difference. Fighting with poise and confidence and punching sharply. And a big right hand by Sacco, and he stays right there as Hatcher tried to pull him back. Joe Barrientos sure has his work cut out for him, Tim. He has to get Hatcher back in that corner, try to stem that flow of blood. Nose does not appear to be a problem, but that cut will now certainly be a factor. Sacco has become a superb counterpuncher here. He lets Hatcher cross his punch, he missed, then he capitalized on the mistakes that Hatcher's making. Hatcher's going straight in. Hatcher is laying his head right into that uppercut counter of Sacco's array. There it is again. Another big uppercut by the challenger and an effective weapon for him. Under a minute remaining in round number six. 
that cut over Hatcher's left eye seems to be getting worse, Tim. The crowd that, chanting Ubi, Ubi, Ubi for Ubaldo Sacco. Argentinians and Italians alike. Oh, and a big oh, low blow, that hurt what him. What a low blow. A low blow by Hatcher. At, at, well, he bought some time with it. At, and I think that was but, a hit, but also. He gets a warning. Magana, the referee, asks Sacco if he's all right. He says yes. Under the 30-second mark we go. Scheduled for 15 rounds, we're in the sixth. Right hand by the champion, good combination. Solid left jab by Sacco. Into the final seconds of round number six. There'll be work in the corner on the champion, Gene Hatcher. little girl the bell for round number seven and as we look back in round six we'll see that big low blow no question about it the challenger complained and the champion got a warning from the referee we're at now live in round number seven Tim Ryan Gil Clancy Sugar Ray Leonard ringside and Campione d'Italia in the scheduled 15 round WBA title fight Hatcher having that cut over the left eyebrow it is right on the eyebrow of the left eye, and Joel Barrientos, the trainer, has uh, done a good job so far. You know, Tim? Tim, Tim, the way that Sacho moves, and he reminds me of, Sacho, he reminds me of the late great champion, Sablo Sanchez. I mean, he moves so gracefully around the ring. Hatcher forcing the issue, and the good peppering jab now of Sacco. Tim, you know that low blow that, that Hatcher landed uh, was a respite for him because it, uh, it gave him a little time to recover. He was in a little trouble when he landed that blow. Lead off right hand by Sacco. That is an angry cut over the left eye of Gene Hatcher. If he gets hit another good left hook or right hand, that thing could bust wide open. Well, he did manage to survive three cuts in the first fight, go on to score a split decision. He just looked to his corner as his father, Ron, word hollered some advice. Sacco now picking away with that jab. Sacco is making Hatcher reach because he, he gives him a head faint, then he moves away, he throws a jab, and then he connects with his combination. The trouble with Gene Hatcher is he's a tough guy, but he's a one-dimensional fighter. He can't change his style. He has to fight this style the entire fight. Oh, Sacco is fight. able to figure him out. That's what's happening. A right hand over by the challenger, a tough left hook right behind it by the champion. Another mistake that Hatcher is making is the fact that he is not cutting the ring off. He's actually following Sacco. He has to cut the ring off to make the fight easier for him. Good combination scored by the champion. Hatcher starting to apply some pressure to Sacco here on the seventh. Him a big right hand by Sacco to right on the cut. There is new blood from the cut over the left eye of the champion, Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. You know, it seems that some of the sting has gone out of Hatch's punches. Do you notice that, Ray? Well, I tell you what I think was doing it, Gil, is that the same combination, that left uppercut of Sacco and the right hand. Good movement, good movement. Well, in, in, in the early rounds, Sacco wasn't moving at all. Now he's taking that little slick move over. The, the, same the, right. the same combination, Gil. Same thing. Steps to the right, hooks underneath, right hand on the chin. Final seconds of the seventh round. Another grueling fight between these two. Round number eight. Live from Campione d'Italia, we're in the eighth round. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard with the champion, Gene Hatcher, now on the left of your screen. The challenger, Rivaldo Sacco and White. And the champion still with an ugly cut again. Joe Barrientos did a good job between rounds, sealing it up at least temporarily. It is on his left eyebrow. The bleeding nose no longer seems to be a problem for him. A close fight as we see it through seven. And the grueling pace we saw in the first matchup between these two last December. Uh, Tim, I don't have the fight that close. Remember, uh, Sacco scored a knockdown, so that was a pretty big round for him. I have him a couple of points ahead. Sacco is actually studying Hatcher. He's looking in for openings, and then he's connecting. Sacco still very relaxed, taking his time, throwing his combinations. 
And he's reopened the cut. He looks like such a well-schooled fighter tonight. Tito Lecturi and his father uh, was a very accomplished professional himself as a middleweight in South America. Won nearly 85 fights as a pro. Beautiful hands of Sacco. This is very frustrating for Jane Hatcher with the cut. And the fact he's been hit and hammered by Sacco. Sacco's taking him apart now. Just yes, taking he him is. apart. Taking control here. Very definitely here in the eighth round. Sacco has got Hatcher in trouble. Hatcher backed up for the first time in the fight. And Sacco standing right there pecking away. Jane legs. Hatcher's legs are gone you now, know, Tim. Tim, once a fighter like Hatcher backs up, he's finished. Fighters like him, they can only go forward. Once you see these guys back over, they're in real bad trouble. Sacco senses that for sure a big combination. Hatcher fighting on gut, staying in the middle of the ring. A well, minute he, to go in round eight. He's, Hatcher's just fallen to the punches of Sacco, which makes him even worse. Boy, is he, does he have heart, though, Tim? Does he ever? Still throwing, and the blood, oh, his face a bloody mask now, and the referee, Magana, is asking for the doctor. The doctor, Mario Sterla of Italy, comes in to examine the champion, Gene Hatcher, here in the eighth round. The doctor giving Magana his uh, counsel and instructions, and Hatcher now knows he's going to have to let it all hang out. The champion from Fort Worth in his second title defense since winning the crown from Johnny Bumpus. But Sacco is scoring on Tim, almost every punch. Tim, they're going to have to stop this fight. Hatcher gamely banging on. in control but Hatcher keeps coming forward then they have to oh. stop this fight it looks to me as if an honor has been seven there's the bell for the round number eight out. will follow Gene Hatcher to the corner Joe Barriendis will really have his work cut out for him if the referee and the doctor allow it to Tim, continue I just don't see how they can the blood is gushing out of his eye well now we can see the cut it's immediately above us here we are in the Hatcher corner our location just below ringside below the ring ropes rather at uh, ringside under the hatcher corner and it's a very serious cut along the eyebrow you see joe barrientis working on it Sacco up on his feet complaining to the referee asking if he has stopped the fight and the now the as we see the replay of action in the round the Sacco people thought the fight had been stopped but it has not as yet Sacco was able to hit hatcher at will after catching him with a couple combinations now we're back live in the corner. Ron Hatcher and Joe Barry and this exhorting the young champion, 26-year-old Gene Hatcher, his wife and mother here in the audience, hoping that somehow he can pull it back together. We're into round number nine. A big eighth round for the challenger, his best of the fight. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, bringing this to you on CBS Sports Sunday. Another thriller. Tim, another right hand right on the cut. Sacco is completely in control of this fight. I'm very surprised that they sent him out for this ninth round. What do you think, Ray? Well, I think that cut is so nasty that he shouldn't be allowed to continue. It's, again, it's very frustrating, and you can see that Hatcher is really discouraged at this point here. Sacco has him completely figured out, and again, Gene can't change his style. He just puts that head in there to get hit. Watch the right hands, Gil. The leadoff right by Sacco. Everybody in the audience, they're starting to be stop the fight. Well, that's what the crowd thinks. The Sacco people thought it would be stopped after round eight. And because of the position, the area of the now, cut. Excuse me, Ray, but the doctor the, is the now doctor trying is to get the referee's me. attention. The doctor is trying to get the referee's attention. Yes, he is at ringside. That's what I said, Gil. He's trying to reach the doctor now, the uh, referee, and he does. And the doctor asking to look at it. And he is shaking his head. And that is going to be it. Referee Magana says no. he wants to continue on. But, and the doctor is now arguing with the referee. I don't believe this. The doctor is standing this. there saying, how can he continue? 
The referee, Ernesto Magana, allowing the fight to continue, apparently against the advice of the ring physician. Now, under the rules, the referee has the final decision. Well, Hatcher told, told the doctor, no, he wants to continue. Now, Magana has stepped in and stopped the fight. In the ninth round, Hatcher wanting to continue, but we have a new world WBA welterweight champion, Ubaldo Sacco from Argentina, who opened a cut in the sixth round and then completely took the fight away from the champion Gene Hatcher who has lost his title in his second defense against the same man and supporters of Sacco have leapt into the ring no doubt both Argentinian and Italian alike Gene Hatcher being consoled in his corner and Joe Barrientos comes in quickly now to work on the cut. So we'll take you back to our studios in New York.